Kind of fun you can have with a revolver, you auto guys that only carry a 9mm double stack with a 35 bazillion magazine. That was fun, and that's part of what firearms are about. Hey guys, Dan Wolfman here. Greetings and salutations, everybody. I think you're going to enjoy this video because today I am a Czech cowboy. Yeah, buddy, because I got two brand new revolvers from Rock Island. The Rock Island's importing from Alpha Proj in uh, Czech Republic. And I've pretty much just finished up my initial review of the AL 3.1, the stainless 2-inch 357 Magnum that I got here, and I was highly impressed. And now the one I've really been waiting for is this beautiful kind of darker blue 3-inch with really nice sights uh, AL 9.0 6-shot 9mm revolver. So, uh, guys, I think you're going to enjoy this review. Let's check it out. Hey guys, so let's look at these beautiful revolvers. That's the two inch 357. Here's the three inch nine millimeter that we'll be focused on here, but make sure to watch our other review that I just did. I'm very impressed with it. Here is the AL 9.0. These weapons are cleared. It's a six shot, three inch, nine millimeter revolver. Because the lighting, it's going to be harder to see the markings than you can in uh, my video on the stainless snubby. But this one, because it's 3 inch, has a beautiful target style sights. A serrated rear, serrated top, a really tall, easy to pick up orange post front. I'm really liking, liking this front sight picture that it gives. Uh, the grips, as I discussed in the other review video, are great. They handled absolutely full power 357 in the snubby. Um, cylinder release latch here. Before I continue, let's look what it comes with. It comes with a tool to take down uh, the cartridges off the moon clip. It actually holds, I don't know, I think like eight rounds in there. So you can just pluck them off. It holds them in there. You could keep your brass if you wanted to. It comes with two moon clips. I've also gotten in moon clips that fit from uh, TK Custom, by the way. They do fit. They do fire. Um, here is a test target that came with it at 15 meters. Look, that's not bad. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I got the first target set on 10, 10 meters. But we're going to see what I can do today, guys. Uh, I'm going to do this review on multiple days. I don't have time to start it today. But I do have test ammo to start. I got a lot of the hard score. 9mm 115. I got Federal Brass 115, even though that's the wrong box. I have SMB both 115 and 124. So I'm curious to see where it prints 115 versus uh, 124 on the SMB. And I will start off with just slow stuff. Uh, single action, slow stuff, double action. Guys, if you watch my videos, stay tuned because I rock and roll. I rock and roll. I'm too brief. Multiple attackers, full realistic targets, rapid fire stuff. The stuff that you really want to know. So this one's a great plinker, I'm sure, for the whole family. At least I think so. Let's see. I hope it doesn't disappoint. Um, but looking at the fit and finish is very good. The single action is really, really nice. And I imagine a lot of people will be plinking with this. Here, so not only could this be a great revolver for everyone in the family, for self-defense purposes, but more recreation, target, whatever. You're going to get good ballistics from a 3-inch barrel if you use something like a 124 plus B top uh, hollow point, like a gold dot or HST. 
etc. So, anyway, let's get to it. First shot, single action, 10 yards um, with the arm score 115. Drop my new clip in there. Boy, it slid in there, just fell in there super easy, ejected super easy. Just drops right in. Boom, perfect. All right. Nice ejection with the moon clips. See how I did. All right, not bad. I'm figuring out where to hold. I wasn't really looking, but I got three dead center. So that ain't bad. I'm sure the gum's even more capable of doing all six there. There, there. So it'll be interesting to see where it prints 115 versus 124. 124 is a little higher or not. But uh, that's pretty much dead on. The rest is, you know, me pulling it a little bit. Getting used to the gun. First shots out of it. Impressed so far. I'm showing you this because a lot of people are going to use this as a great training tool. A fun gun for the family. 9mm, cheap to target practice with. So it's just a great gun. I think it will be great to have. I think it will be great to serve that purpose with the family. I think it will be great as a training aid for maybe maybe you have a, a, an expensive carrier revolver or something like that. Of course, playing with 9mm is a heck of a lot cheaper. So I'm going to do a few more slow stuff, guys, but bear with me. I always rock and roll multiple photorealistic targets at the end, one-handed shooting. I get into all kinds of realistic stuff, CQB, um, high pectoral index stuff. Stay tuned, guys, but I'd like to see kind of where it prints and get used to it a little bit. All right, guys, just want to show you the moon clip and the uh, removal tool. It holds 10 rounds, I just found out. So all you do is you put it in there and you simply pull it off. That way you don't bend your moon clips. This thing's great. It's a great little handy tool for 9mm, okay? Just going to do my first shots of double action at 5 yards uh, with the uh, arm square ammo. Nice. Wow, okay, only at 5 yards, but that's my first time with the EA. That's, that's pretty nice. Uh, four in the X ring, five in the X ring, one in the nine ring right there. So that ain't bad. All right, bad guy, five yards. Huh. Okay, not bad, not great. Uh, five out of the six weren't here, but I threw one of the shots. I think it was the first or second because I remember adjusting my grip. But one, two, three, four, five were right in here. And actually right there is my aiming point. And I threw one a little bit, but obviously pretty good. Let's drop another six. This bad guy, five yards, double action from appendix from a, a Remora Gen 1 uh, holster. See how I did. Actually, I'll take that any day because I got one there. That's one I think I pulled up, which actually right in line with his uh, center line. One there, and then I put four in this nice little tight group right there. So, you know, obviously, this is a pretty accurate revolver, I think. I'm starting to push it because I think a three inch, nine millimeter ballistics, 124 plus P, HST, gold dot, something like that would do really, really well. Just below 357, easier to handle, but way above like a 38 snubby. Three inch barrel, nine millimeter, good stuff. Spree murder, mass killer, test, 12, 13 yards, headshot, gonna pull it off in PA. I think I pulled a little left and it might be high because, and that ejected, that was singularly loaded with the 124 SMB, let's see. All right guys, now obviously, I, I, I'm not under stress. It's not, it's not a real world scenario with people in the front line who weren't prepared for it that day. Uh, but I got it. I got it a little high. That might be because it's 124. I'm curious. I'm going to rerun it with 115. 
that was up there. Earlier with the 357 Magnum I got there, right here is actually kind of my aiming point. I'd like to get the guy about there-ish uh, at this angle. If it was a pure side angle, take it in the ear. Uh, but either one of those will still work pretty good. I'm going to try it with the 115 to see. All right, let's try it again with the 115 arm squirt. Little high again. Let's see how I did. And so yeah, uh, pretty good. That's kind of where I wanted it right there. I'm happy with that. So I'm just saying, get your skills even with a double action, even a gun you're not familiar with it. Try and be able to make that 12, 13 yard headshot. Hey everybody, I'm back for day two reviewing of the 9.09 millimeter revolver. Uh, guys, in full disclosure, Rock Island Arms Corps sent these two revolvers out for me. I'm gonna check Cowboy again today. The 9.09 millimeter three inch and the 3.1 stainless two inch W357. Uh, I reviewed that first, really enjoyed it, handled everything. Please watch that review on the AL 3.1. Uh, but guys, I do want to disclose that they sent me these to test, that they didn't pay me or anything like that. I'm not getting any other fees or anything like that. Uh, they did send me the Arms Core ammo to test. All the other ammo you see me testing, it, including the hollow points I'm going to use right now, is provided by me. So I hope you guys enjoy the reviews. I also, uh, the, the 9.0 comes with two moon clips. I got three moon clips from TK Custom. He was uh, nice enough to provide them for me. A great source right now until uh, Rock Island Armory Imports, Arms Corp gets uh, some extra moon clips when it's first released. So um, they've, they've been working great as well. I want to plug them. And uh, I, I'm going to start out cold, guys. I'm going to start out cold at 10 yards on the USPSA type target. I'll start with some Fiocchi, Fiocchi 115 grain uh, basic cheap hollow points. Then I'll go to a halfway decent carry around. Probably the fifth would be my choice of um, HTP plus P 115. And then uh, for my ride home, I already got one in the speed loader holder, which uh, is um, which is going to hold my moon clip today. I got that loaded up, which is decent enough. Some HDPs and a, a couple of um, Golden Saber 124 plus P. You know, just for when I go to dinner after this review. Uh, anyway, guys, I wanted to disclose that. And I got to disclose, uh, in, in all honesty, that the, this is the second AL 9.0 that they sent me. The first one wasn't retreading, resetting the trigger out of the box. I don't know what the problem is. They said they haven't had problems with anyone else. They're going to have their master gunsmith take a look at it. Um, it wasn't resetting out of the box. And um, my guy who does fix this stuff wasn't working that day. So quite frankly, I just sent it back to him after I attempted to run it myself. I, I worked the trigger. I put some gun oil. I worked the trigger. It was resetting. But when I went to fire it live, it was still sticky. My guess is that it had fired hundreds of rounds and not been clean from previous testers, and or combination gunked up with thick shipping um, uh, grease. I, I think it was a fluke. It got into, and it was a cold day when it was delivered. It got into the uh, trigger mechanism. I think that's just a fluke. They're pretty much telling me it's a fluke, and they've been extra testing all the other ones that got there. This is still T&E stuff, guys. Um, so I don't think it's an issue. I think it's just a fluke. It happens with every manufacturer. And if they get back to me before this video is done and they find something, uh, I'll let you know. But sometimes, guys, we've seen that with releases before, extra thick grease that in, in the cold weather during the winter times. Sometimes that causes an issue, and I think it just happened to seep in. So um, had I taken the side plate off and cleaned it up, I'm sure it would have been fine. But I wanted to disclose that. Now let's get to the shooting. I'm going to go cold, and I'll start with the, uh, I'll start with the Fiocchi. I'll start with the Fiocchi, Fiocchi uh, hollow points. So let's do that right now. All right, guys, here goes some hollow points. Double action. Hold the high left. That one is low. Little left. There we go. Six. Yep. You see a nice reception. I'll pause it. We'll take a look. First one I threw. All 
right, so other than the first flyer, I kind of have a group. And if you look at the earlier, um, so far, what I've shot, it looks like it's always shooting a little left. It has fully adjustable sights. I could adjust them. I'm not going to do that quite yet. Uh, I'm going to put this back and see how it does with the HTP plus P, the 115 plus P. Okay. All right, guys, let's go again with the HTP. See how it does. Okay, so I'm still pulling left. I think I need to adjust the sight a little bit, but definitely like that much is probably me. Okay, but still grouping. I wish I would have circled them on it earlier, but you can see that it's an accurate revolver. This is 10 yards, and uh, let's see if we break the line. So 10 out of 10 A zone, technically, um, even though a bit left, and that's what I saw earlier, a little bit left. Fully nice adjustable sights. I might see if I can find a little screwdriver to do that now. But, you know, that much is that much is me and the rest of the group, you know. So, there we go. All right, guys, off camera, on the other target you see up there, I sighted it in a little bit. It's still not perfect. It was pretty good from the manufacturer. But it was pulling, I, I noticed I was always a little left. Some of that I attributed to me, a little bit is. But, uh, so I adjusted the sight a little bit. Should be a little bit better. Now I pulled it into seven yards. I'm going to go through 24 rounds as fast as I can with four moon clips. And I'm wanting the gun. Yeah, we did. Pulled a few shots right. I made I over adjusted the sights a little. All right, guys, let's have not, I'm not shooting as good a day, but 15 out of 24, 15 out of 24 A zone. That's not a bad percentage. Uh, I threw a couple a little outside the box, but obviously it's a pretty accurate revolver, right? Uh, I don't think I'm shooting quite as good a day as I did the other day, but uh, we'll see. And uh, guys, we're going to start rocking and rolling, so stay tuned. Hey guys, before we rock and roll, I want to talk a little bit about philosophy of use. Number one, nine millimeters cheap. So this is a great plinker without too much recoil for the entire family. I think that's what most people are going to use it for. Uh, you're going to use it as a training aid, a training tool, in case you have like some really expensive 357 Magnums you carry or, or something to that effect. You are also going to use it maybe as your first revolver because you got a Glock 19. You're a nine millimeter dude. And uh, you're like, hey, I always wanted to get a revolver, but I don't want to stock different caliber. So there you go. SHTF, SHTF uh, situation. Is this something your kids or wife, maybe a non-shooter can practice with and shoot really well if it ever comes to that? Yeah, probably. Um, can it go good in a backpack while you got your, uh, you know, maybe pistol on your side? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, three inch barrel, good adjustable sights. And um, also for self-defense, you know, I think it needs to be vetted a little bit. They've been around for a while, the Alpha Prod revolvers, but it needs to be vetted a little bit. Um, and you got to vet your pistol before carrying it like anything else. Uh, but, you know, it could do that. So it's ballistics, 4 plus P, going to be really good. Um, to guys, I'm no Paul Harrell, I'm no HR Funk, I'm no Mr. Holster. Um, and also a shout out to my friend Gun Sam. Uh, Gun Sam, Revolver Aficionado. I know he's jealous of that and something he would like. So, uh, anyway, guys, let's get going. Hey, change my mind. Let's rock and roll about five yards on this bad guy over here. I'm going to drop 12 shots. Here we go. 
And keep your distance, please. Back off, dude. Back off, dude. Oh! Really big movement. Okay, in reality, I'd be moving, obviously, guys. Let's take a look. Alright, not too shabby. Six out of twelve are definitely A zone spinal, right in the throat. Spinal, that's gonna take him out. This one's gonna nick his heart. This one's gonna nick his artery. So that's all good. One's just a little bit outside. That's still within the eight inch pie. That's still very good. And I dropped two uh, a little less. But overall, you see, it's definitely workable. All right, guys, let's see if I can get this on camera. I'm going to try a different reload method. I got the same bad guys, only two arm lengths away, bad breast distance where stuff starts. I'm going to try a different reload method just to see how it works out. I don't know if I'll be in frame at the end, but we'll see what happens, all right? Hey, can I help you, man? Yeah, don't worry, trouble, man. Don't worry, trouble. Big up! Try it with speed strips. I lost a lot of rounds. The speed strips are meant for 357 38. I could shake them, they were upside down. I wanted to see, but when ripping it out of the pocket, you saw I lost five out of eight cartridges that were in it. I only got three in the gun. That would be my very backup. So I would keep a uh, mover in a speed loader holder, which is what you saw earlier. I might keep the speed strip as a backup. And honestly, me, I carry a backup gun. All right, guys, so the results of the speed strip were, you know, it's not designed for auto pistol cartridges. So that wasn't great, but let's look at my hits. Uh, I mean, I was backing up and moving a little more realistic stuff. I wanted to see if I could capture that on camera. One just low of the A-box, two right there, upper thoracic, really good. Maybe the top of the heart, probably just above the heart, maybe an aorta if I get lucky. One over here getting in all this long couple in his throat, near the spine, near the spine's always good, one in the spine, blasting him through the chin, maybe getting the artery over there, not bad, and uh, one up here in the face. So I kind of drifted my shots a little high, but that's on the move, and this is good stuff if you're at that level to do it safely and able to train that way. All right, guys, I got to make you aware of something. Looking at the last two runs and what I remember, it looks like both the last two runs, twice I short stroked the trigger each. Uh, I'm not shooting as well today. I'm not as sharp today. Part of that is on me, uh, but but the, the, the false reset is seems to be farther out on these revolvers than my Ruger GP100, and I don't know how it compares to like smaller Smith & Wessons or things of that nature. I don't think it's as bad as like the Smith and like L-frame, uh, maybe K-frame guns or the GP100 guns. Um, I don't know how it relates to like smaller um, snubbies because I'm not that familiar with them. I know the LCR has some short stroking uh, issues. It is something to be aware of. I'll show you that in a minute. I want to run another run now showing my favorite reload method and some other stuff. We'll see if I capture it on camera and then maybe we'll go um, to taking a look at what I'm talking about. Part of that is training. Part of that is on you, but it is something that I have to divulge to you to be uh, aware of. It's, it's the same with any revolver, but I think the resets, the, the false resets a little bit farther out on this to the actual reset. Um, so be aware of it. Oh, hey guys, what's going on, man? Hey man, back up. Ah! See what I did. I think I got one miss. Okay, guys, so my surprise attacker got it pretty bad. I got three in the A zone, one up here, heart and lung, one really doesn't do a whole lot down in the stomach. And uh, I nailed my headshot into his eyeball there. Now, obviously, I'm moving because this is training to me and moving and practicing one handed. He got three in the A zone. I'm going to assume that I was up close with the two handed grip on the nine millimeter revolver. And I only got him once with the 357 because I think I was moving back one handed like this, I believe. And that's not something I've really trained before. So I friggin' missed the guy. 
So that ain't good, but that kind of shows you the training of reality and uh, something you have to think about with low capacity firearms as well. Hey guys, guy with the knife, but you know, he's, he's not pulling it right up on me. I, uh, oh, close, two, two arms lengths apart. And uh, I'll do some movement here, see if we can get on camera. So one, two away, and let's say he just, he had his hand back here and he came around the car in a, uh, you know, Walmart parking lot or something. Here, give me your money. So, you know, you're just getting out of the car, you're walking. Oh, jump the knife! Okay, I got a really bad grip on the gun that time. I short stroked it, but that's because I got a really bad grip on the gun. The previous run, doing the New York Reload, I didn't uh, short stroke either, and that's, you know, surprising considering it was a 357 or 357 snubby in my left hand. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the hits here. One, two, three, four, five, and I guess I decided to shoot him in the head. Or maybe that's when my grip was messed up, and uh, someone was uh, looking out for me if you know this was a real scenario but uh, just showing you some movement stuff and that is capable guys I wasn't happy with that so I'm gonna run that drill same drill again three inch barrel balances beautifully by the way all right here we go one two same scenario There's the false reset, there's the real reset. Oh, and it kind of almost hits that false reset and then it's there. False reset, locks up, full reset, there. False reset, real reset. So the false reset's really close. Now the gun's getting dirty. I've shot a lot of rounds here today and I think that's part of what's going on. I haven't cleaned it through the shooting today. I shot it before between the first part and uh, so I cleaned it last night. Locked up. So there's the false resets way out here, and that happened to me again. So, don't know what to say. Here's my knife attack two results. So I still made pretty good hits on them, considering what I dealt with. I like the stress. I like the reality. So you know, four good upper thoracic hits. One upright in the center of his throat and his spine. This one probably wouldn't do a whole lot. Unfortunately, maybe, uh, I really don't. I think that would have missed the artery. I uh, don't know with a big fat neck guy like this, like myself. So there's the results. Okay guys, I'm just gonna drop six on the guy in front of me just to see what I'm doing. Here we go. Close, well, that worked fine. No short choking there. Punched him center line. It's what you call giving a guy the zipper. One, two, three, four, five, six up his spine. The zipper up his spine. Hey guys, keep in mind I'm running this gun really hard today. I've shot 88 rounds, 80 to 88 rounds, I think, of the arms core. I've shot 12 hollow points. I've shot 12, maybe 18 SMB, and probably I'm going around 20 to 30 uh, federal so far. So, you know, it's kind of like 130 to 150 rounds through it. Maybe a bit more if I counted them all. And I think I shot 24 off camera when I was reciting. So uh, I'm going to work on these two targets. Uh, I'm not going to adjust camera, but you know where they are. I'm going to start in between them and push them. Right, there, I am high. Okay. Whoa, hey guys, what's up? You got a problem, man? Back up! Yeah, that's how I did. Well, as far as accuracy goes, I'll take that. I'll take that. There's all six dropped on this guy. Okay, and yeah, I kind of bobbled getting a, you know, it's a speed loader holder, not a moon clip holder, and I kind of bobbled it on the reload. 
I got a couple nice double taps, four right in there, and another double tap right up there. Still really solid hits. So that worked out pretty good. 13 yards again, but uh, going slower, just more like showing you that most people would be using this for a target pistol, uh, for, for plinking, for fun. I'm going to go 13 yards and go six to the body. Uh, he's narrow because he's bladed, so I'm probably going to shoot towards his shoulder, a little below his shoulder, back of the tricep. through it it's still running that's good all right considering that's exactly where i'm aiming and i got three right in there trying to miss the shoulder bone but trying to get still into the goodies and the lung and the heart three right there that one right there that one's a little too far back but you know not bad not bad at, at 13 yards all right i'm going to attempt to see if i can put six in the head now at 10 yards i think two are federal and then the other four are smb 115. Ten yards on, and just slow fire. I'm not reacting quickly or anything. More, more target shooting. My hips were. I'm pretty tired. I've shot a lot of rounds today, but boy, that that nice tall front orange post. Is certainly, certainly nice. Nice rear serrated. It's very good sights on this. Very good. All right, you see my three hits from earlier. The 9.0, the 13 yard challenge, and the 357. And out of those six, one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty much my aiming point. Five right there, and one just a little bit low, and the jawline still getting them good in the neck. So you see this, this is really capable. It's a really accurate revolver. It's really fun to plank with. I've been having a great time checking both of these revolvers out. All right guys, quick size comparison. I think this is Smith & Wesson 6357 Magnum with a three inch barrel, the pink lady here. Ruger SP1, two and a quarter inch barrel, typical 357. You can see that uh, in my AL 3.1 review, I compared it a lot to the SP101. Uh, but of course it's six shots and 30 ounces instead of five shots and 25 to 26 ounces. So, you know, if you primary hip carry but a bigger L-frame or GP100 is too big for you, the AL 3.1 might be the right way to go. And then you got the 9.0, same frame, but a three inch barrel. So it's kind of a quick size comparison. So a beginning lady shooter, what should you do better with this lightweight, especially the shorter barrel most people get? No, this is a much better choice for most newer shooters, um, including females, um, teenagers, etc. Okay, uh, let's talk about the triggers a second. No false reset. Smith & Wesson. No false reset. False reset and locked up. I'm not hearing the two clicks like I hear on this. Hey guys, I want to thank Range Guns and Saves for letting me shoot here today, making this video possible. Thanks. Hey guys, so final thoughts, wrap up on the Rock Island uh, revolvers. I've really enjoyed these, uh, the imports of the Alpha Proj. I've had a lot of fun shooting both of them. I think that the 9.0 is uh, great for plinking for the whole family. Great training aid for their revolvers. Great training aid to teach people how to shoot good. If you shoot a double action, revolver good, you're going to shoot everything else better because of learning how to not stay hold at sights as you pull through. Um, overall, I'm really impressed. I've shot, what, like, 150, 200, near 200 rounds through the uh, 9mm today. Uh, I've shot the 357 a lot. 
Um, something to be aware of is kind of that false reset where it becomes locked and dead and you have to have it out a little bit more to go again. That is an issue. That is an issue you do have to be aware of. I think for the 9.0, most people are going to buy this blinker. Not necessarily all the cool stuff I did today. Um, they're going to be shooting it as a target pistol, which is really what it was designed as. Um, so overall, guys, I'm impressed. The quality seems good. And uh, I'm not sure which one I'm going to keep. So uh, hope you guys liked it. Please like it. Please it helps me out a lot. Please thumbs up. Please share. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Really helps me out. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good one. Stay safe.